Yeah. So obviously as a cardiac surgeon who is, you know, on the carnivore diet, this is something that I deal with quite, quite, uh, uh, often, and uh, this is usually the number one question that comes up. So the whole fear, I guess I'll say, around the carnivore diet and heart health is based on the fact that it's based on what I'll call the misconception that eating saturated fat is what leads to heart disease. And that uh, theory, uh, which is really what it was, uh, was basically first pushed out in the 1950s and 1960s by a scientist by the name of Ansel Keys. Uh, we now know in retrospect that the data that he based that on was either, depending on how you want to interpret things, fraudulent or just significantly misinterpreted. And what happened was, you know, during the 1950s and 1960s, there was a rapid increase in heart disease, an alarming increase in heart disease in this country. And for various reasons, Ansel Keys became a very influential figure in this. And his theory was that saturated fat, dietary saturated fat caused heart disease. And he pushed that narrative to the extent that there were studies that his team actually did that didn't agree with that theory that he just ignored and suppressed the data from. There were other scientists and doctors and physicians at the time that were trying to push other theories, namely that sugar and carbohydrates were the main cause of heart disease. And basically he just would ruin their careers, uh, you know? And uh, so, and then, what happened was, you know, so we got to a point where they issued the first set of US dietary guidelines based on this same flawed thinking. And they said, we got to lower the amount of saturated fat in foods. And the natural consequence of whenever you take fat out of food is you pretty much have to substitute in carbohydrates because it's not easy to add protein and you know, basically carbohydrates and fat are, you know, what make food tasty. Uh, so they took out the fat, they added a bunch of carbohydrates and in the, you know, in the zeal to go low fat, we ended up unintentionally going high carbohydrate. And you look at what has happened to our health as a nation since then, and the evidence speaks for itself. You know, obesity has continued to skyrocket. Diabetes has continued to skyrocket. Heart disease has continued to skyrocket. And people will push back on that a little bit to me and say, but wait, you know, less people actually die of heart disease today than they did 30 years ago. And I say, well, we've gotten better at treating heart disease. We have advanced heart surgery now. Uh, we have some of these medicines. Uh, and we can keep people alive longer, but more people get heart disease, you know, today than they did 40 years ago. And heart disease consistently for the past 40 years has been the number one killer in this country. Everyone is so focused on the COVID epidemic and, you know, how bad COVID is. And the reality is, is that last year, 2020, heart disease killed twice as many people as COVID did. And heart disease has done that every year for the past 35 years, at least 40 years, probably even more. So heart disease remains our number one problem. And I think the simplest evidence I try and you know talk to people about is we've been trying this low fat experiment, this low fat fad diet, which is what it is, because humans did not eat this prior to, you know, 40 or 50 years ago, and the experiment is failing miserably. In the end, I think that cholesterol is part of the process that ultimately leads to heart disease, but I don't think it is the inciting event. And therefore, trying to treat heart disease by lowering the cholesterol is the wrong approach. We need to step back. We need to get to the root cause, which is poor metabolic health and the inflammation that comes along with it. And then it turns out when you really look at the data well, um, 
if you are metabolically healthy, and one of the best pieces of evidence for that is if you look at your cholesterol numbers and you, your HDL cholesterol, which is you know traditionally called your good cholesterol, is high, and the triglycerides, which are another number on your cholesterol panel that oftentimes people don't even look at, but if that's low and your HDL cholesterol is high, the data actually shows that having a low LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, is not beneficial and may actually be harmful. There's some data that suggests in that setting, in that context, high LDL cholesterol actually leads to a longer lifespan. So That's interesting. Go, I, yeah. I had a, a while well, I was seeing my doctor and um, my numbers came back at the time they, I had 43, my triglycerides were 43, my LDL was a hundred and my LDL was, I think 160 maybe. So overall it was high. And my doctor was kind of like, I don't really know what to say. I'm supposed to tell you to get a statin, but you're very healthy. You've lost all this weight. So, you know, it's up to you. Yeah, and, and actually your your doctor was, uh, you know, fortunately better than most because, you know, unfortunately the way that doctors have been trained is to only look at that LDL cholesterol number or the total cholesterol number. And if it's high, the only thing they've been trained to do is a statin. And, you know, again, diet doesn't get into the equation, even though the guidelines actually say, you know, the first line for treatment of high cholesterol is supposed to be lifestyle modification, which includes dietary uh, therapy. But again, you know, the only dietary therapy that most, you know, may, I would say is espoused by the mainstream, you know, kind of medical uh, teaching is restrict your calories and eat a low fat diet. And the reality is, is that doesn't work. So, you know, most doctors now just skip over that step in the guidelines and they go right to medications because that's the only tool they have available to them. Uh, fortunately, there are now a, a growing number of physicians, other healthcare professionals. Quite honestly, a lot of this has been figured out by non-healthcare professionals. I have learned about heart disease from engineers like Ivor Cummins, from computer yeah. scientists like David Feldman. Uh, and, you know, they, they have actually ended up teaching me about heart disease. And that was one of the other things that was a little upsetting to me, you know, to think back and say, I'm a cardiac surgeon. And, you know, I went through medical school. I, I you know, was in the medical system. And, and then it took an engineer and a computer scientist to teach me about what was really causing heart disease. Yeah, I, I, but it's been um, beautiful the way that, um, you know, some of these questions have been um, democratized in a sense, <laughs> you know, yeah, no, and I, I think, think it's important to have like other disciplines, you know, chiming in because that helps broaden the way we look at things. So, I yeah. think that's exactly it. And I think, you know, mo first and foremost, I think the most important job of a physician is to remain curious. And if you are seeing a physician and they are not curious enough, like you come to them and say, I've lost all this weight, I'm feeling great. Yes, this one number has gone up, but all my other numbers look better. Uh, you know, and you tell them how you did it and you get the standard answer of, oh, you know, that's gonna kill you. Uh, and they're not curious enough to look into that, then, you know, Unfortunately, sometimes the only answer is to find another physician. Uh, but, you know, you can try and educate them. You can say, oh, well, you know, you can say lots of things. You could say there's this guy, David Feldman, and, and his website that, you know, talks all about cholesterol. Or you can say, hey, there's this heart surgeon I heard talk, Dr. Ovedia, you know, who, who goes into yeah. some of this. You know, maybe you'll listen to him because at least he's another doctor. Uh, but overall, I think one of the biggest, you know, issues we have in medicine is that doctors just aren't curious anymore. And it's not the doctor's fault. It's the way the system is set up. 
the system has been, you know, has evolved to a point that doctors are overwhelmed. They don't have the time that they should to spend with the patients because of the insurance regulations and the, the pharmaceutical industry has too much influence. The food industry has too much influence and the sanctity of the patient physician relationship, you know, has been, has been destroyed. And, you know, besides my passion about metabolic health, one of my other passions is trying to take back control of medicine, patients and physicians working together to take back control of medicine.